So we're, we're standing really close to where the uh, dam was removed, the Simp Simpkins Dam on the Patapsco River, close to Ellicott City in, in Maryland. This is one of uh, four dams on the Patapsco, um, two of which have been taken out uh, recently. And I have some of the people standing here with me that were uh, key to, to having this uh, happen. Serena, what, what's some of the history of the uh, why um, here, um, why this dam uh, could be removed? Sure. Um, well, there are actually, there, like you said, there are four dams on the Patapsco. Um, the dam upstream of this, the Union Dam, um, was actually under consideration for removal by the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. They own the dam. It was breached by Hurricane Agnes in the 1970s. Um, so that project was one that was, had already been in the works for several years. Um, the dam downstream of this, the Bloaty Dam, um, is also owned by the Department of Natural Resources and there's been about 10 people that have died at that structure. So it's a real safety hazard. Um, so the park and DNR have a vested interest in seeing that dam removed as well. So really what you had was this privately owned dam in the middle of it. Um, luckily, um, the mill associated with the dam, um, which most recently manufactured recycled cardboard, actually um, burnt mostly down in 1995. Um, so the dam is currently serving no function. Um, again, it kind of broke up the potential for a contiguous um, set of removals. So we approached the landowner, um, wondering if he'd give us permission to just yank the dam out. And he was, he was very supportive of doing that. Um, and that all that kind of came on top of the fact that the Maryland Department of Natural Resources, their fisheries department, had been doing monitoring on the Patasco, the fish ladders that were on all these dams and had been able to document the fact that the ladders that were here were actually ineffective for passing some of the target species like Illawai, blueback herring, and American Eagle. And so, you know, what better way to pass these fish than from the dam? So Matt, the, uh, Noah played a part in this as well. What's, what's some of the background on, on their role? Sure, well, we're, I'm part of the National Marine Fisheries Service part of NOAA, and we have an interest in the marine fish that um, was just describing these diadromous fish. They spend some part of their life cycle in freshwater and some part of their life cycle in the ocean, and so they need to travel between the two. And we uh, have a fish passage program as part of our restoration center um, that provides funding and technical assistance uh, to try and get these projects done. So that's basically our role. Uh, we've been a funder, and uh, through folks like myself, uh, also doing technical assistance. We give, um, we give funding for implementation as well as, um, in, especially in this case, uh, we, we fund um, monitoring of project results uh, for lots of reasons. Obviously, we want to know the effectiveness of the project um, for the, the fish passage, but these projects have also other implications. Um, for example, in this case, we have a large accretion of sand behind the dam um, that we release uh, through the removal. Uh, we don't always release sediment accreted behind a dam when we do a removal, but that's increasingly becoming, uh, a, a, I don't know about a preferred, but a, uh, an appealing technique because it can be a lot less costly if the sediment's clean. But obviously downstream interests, both uh, living, biotic, mm -hmm. aquatic resources, floodplain animals and whatnot, and humans, go well, through human life and, and property, uh, have interest downstream. So we, we have a strong interest in understanding in detail the effects of that kind of sediment release. And so, um, as you'll hear, I'm sure, from these two, more about those efforts mm -hmm. to learn more details about those impacts, and importantly, the recovery rates of the downstream reefs to those kinds of impacts. Yeah, so we, we have a lot of sediment that was stored behind this dam, especially sand. And Alan, what's some of your backgrounds in kind of looking at physical processes and how river changes? You know, what do you expect to see uh, as uh, the sediment is released? Well, what's important is that rivers are, are in an equilibrium with um, sediment, slope, and water. And when we remove a dam, we have the potential to change any of those factors. So now sediment moves as bed load and suspended sediment. So and like in the water and then on the bed right. of the channel. Right, so we yeah. have sand behind the dam which can move along the bed or in suspension. The release of that sediment has the potential to actually change the channel morphology. So we need to understand how that potentially could happen and how that can affect habitat. So we're interested in both understanding bed load transport as a result of removal 
as well as the finer material in suspension that it has the ability to bury the habitat or go downstream and affect Chesapeake Bay. Yeah, so, and part of it, so we're looking at effects both upstream of the dam too and how much sediment is coming out and then where it's all going. And that takes some time for that to happen, right? It just doesn't all go out in, in one big pulse of, of release kind of thing. So Graham, um, McCormick, McCormick, excuse me, McCormick Taylor is doing some of the work. What, what's kind of the scale of what you have to do to be able to monitor some of those changes? Well, we've established a series of 31 different cross sections, um, extending from about a mile upstream of the dam all the way down pretty close to the mouth of uh, at the um, at the near the inner harbor. And um, so that it's going to include um, facies mapping, where we're going to actually map the the river, the way the river looks, so that we can tell before and after the dam removal what the bed of the river looks like. We're also going to be able to quantify the amount of sediment that is being deposited in these areas and the amount of sediment that's been released from the dam so they're kind of tracking it through and how long are you going to have to do that for what do you what that's do you going to go on for five years so for five we're years. going to do a series of six different surveys twice a year and then following one larger um, storm event hopefully a hurricane so. great yeah so a lot of different pieces <laughs>